You're watching the American Horticultural Society's Centennial Series, Horticultural Heroes, where we feature discussions with champions in the field of horticulture and gardening who have contributed to the American Horticultural Society's growth over the past 100 years. In this, we present a discussion with Keister Evans, former executive director of the American Horticultural Society from 1970 to 1976, at what's considered the organization's most pivotal time, which included the acquisition of River Farm as its national headquarters. Now, Keister Evans. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to come back to visit the River Farm. Uh, it has a lot of meaning for me, and, uh, and I would say for me and my family. Uh, we had the pleasure uh, of my having come here in 1970 uh, in the role of executive director. <clears throat> and uh, we stayed six years uh, and, uh, and departed in, in 1976 and moved on to other things. But during that six year period, uh, the most exciting thing happened, I think, in the history of the American Horticultural Society and that was the acquisition of the River Farm property. <clears throat> I had uh, previously, before joining uh, AHS, had managed the American Rose Society in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, the American Rose Society was located in, uh, in Whetstone Park, which is a major, beautiful metropolitan park. Uh, and the governor enticed the Rose Society to move its headquarters there by not only building a headquarters facility, but locating it in a very large rose garden, a 13-acre rose garden encompassed in that park. So when I had the chance to join the American Horticultural Society, uh, uh, we moved it, we were in, in downtown D.C., or up near the Shoreham Hotel in D.C., we moved it to 901 North Washington Street in Alexandria, which is a six-story typical contemporary office building. Uh, but I felt if the American Horticultural Society, for sure, ought to have property uh, and grounds and could, should have uh, opportunities to display gardens and landscaping. And so I suggested to the board that we try to see if that could be possible. Uh, and they agreed, and we looked at several properties uh, around in D.C. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, at the same time, uh, word got out that the embassy of Russia was going to buy this property, which was called the Wellington Estate. <clears throat> and the neighborhood was just as up in arms about that as, as they were about it being sold in, during the last 12 months. It created quite a row. <clears throat> and so we had an opportunity. Uh, the property was owned by uh, the Matheson, Matheson family, Mr. Malcolm Matheson. And he was, uh, he had moved to Florida, but he was still very lucid. And uh, so Bill Braun, uh, a settlement attorney, and I uh, went to see him. And, uh, and he agreed to sell the property. Uh, and the price was a million dollars, but he agreed to give back $200,000 to develop the, uh, the mansion so that it could be used uh, practically as, uh, for office space. Now, uh, you, you say, well, where did you get a million dollars? Although that doesn't seem like much today when we're sitting on 26, 7 acres uh, of property, that riverfront property on the Potomac. But uh, the board of directors uh, of, of AHS, American Horticulture, uh, uh, had a, a very distinguished assor uh, assortment of directors. And for some reason, several of them were from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, and very well connected uh, in Pittsburgh uh, fortunes. The Hunt fortune, uh, the Scaife and May were two fortunes. Uh, they, I'm trying to think the Mellons uh, were involved. And so, and then coincidentally, um, the vice president of, uh, was, was a gentleman named Frederick Close or Fitz Close. And he had just retired as chairman of the board of Alcor Aluminum Company. <clears throat> so he, he arranged an appointment. Uh, Mr. Close arranged an appointment with Mrs. Edith Hout. Uh, and Mr. Close and David Leach, who was president, and I went to see Mrs. Hout in New York. Uh, 
<clears throat> and explain to her the opportunity we felt we had for the Horticultural Society to be here. Well, it wasn't a particular, it was a wonderful accomplishment, but not a particularly hard sell. Uh, Mrs. Hough was already well known for her interest in horticulture and gardening and had, had, had benevolent charity uh, contributions a number of other places. So she was uh, very willing to do this uh, and made the arrangements. And uh, so uh, I think the settlement of the, uh, Mr. Matheson uh, uh, worked with us on going over the estate plans and the, the plats and uh, to be sure everything was in order. And then the settlement was here, was held back here in the ballroom uh, in, 19, I think it was in uh, January 1973. Mm -hmm. I, 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 is that correct? Mm -hmm. I, I could miss the dates. Uh, and uh, so soon after that, we uh, moved the offices here or c converted the houses and moved the offices here. And, and they've been here ever since. <clears throat> and we grew rapidly uh, during those years. Uh, it hadn't really had the national outreach <clears throat> And uh, it, there were just a couple of thousand members. Who's the membership chairman? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, if you if you look check the records before 1970 in those old manuals, you'll see it was more of a prof of an academic professional group, uh, more uh, and a lot centered around uh, the National Arboretum. In fact, the first offices were on Bladensburg Road, right across from the National Arboretum. But we started, uh, I, I had the good opportunity to learn something about direct mail. We, we hired a direct mail consultant and we did a lot of direct mail <laughs> campaigns and the membership exploded. It went up to like 35,000 members uh, over three or four years, something like that. Uh, direct mail, mailings back, blah, blah, blah. There's a challenge to that. That's, uh, that could be another story. It's costly and you've got to be sure you earn as much as you spend. <laughs> there's, a, there's a financial challenge to it. But it did grow the membership and, and, and was quite active. Uh, so um, the grand over, we, uh, the, the sale took place here. And then uh, I, the following, uh, the grand opening, I guess, was the following year. I, I mean, I, it was soon afterwards. Uh, and there was a major event to celebrate the grand opening. <clears throat> uh, uh, we had a consultant who had good connections at the White House, uh, and so he arranged for Mrs. Nixon to come. Uh, the president would have come, but it was right in the heat of the Watergate, and, uh, and, 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 and <laughs> turns out it, wa it wasn't convenient. <laughs> but, but she came, uh, and she was already friends with Enid Hout. Uh, they had known each other uh, from other places. And uh, so, uh, believe it or not, she came by boat. It was like a houseboat. They brought down the river. There was a dock out here. Uh, and the Brandywine Museum up in Pennsylvania furnished a four-in-hand coach, a uh, horse-drawn four-in-hand coach, uh, and driver in costume and so forth. And we met her at the ramp uh, and rode the coach, you probably have pictures of this, yeah. I rode the coach up this way, and then uh, the Marine Band was here, of course there, well, there was Secret Service everywhere, uh, the, uh, on the roof, in the river actually, uh, fro uh, fro in the river because she uh, got, came on the river, and uh, uh, the Marine, Marine Band was playing, the Mount Vernon Guard was playing, uh, and then Mrs. Hopps was here, and many, many luminaries, the uh, the secretary of the Smithsonian, I recall, the secretary is the CEO at the Smithsonian. That's, that can be uh, sometimes mis misleading. Uh, but a wonderful sit-down luncheon, and uh, Mrs. Nixon and Mrs. Hobbit made presentations, and David Leach, the president of AHS, on behalf of AHS. Uh, and uh, so it was a wonderful beginning, and I'm happy it's still here and will continue. Thank you for watching Horticultural Heroes a special centennial series where we feature discussions with champions in the field of horticulture and gardening who have contributed to the American Horticultural Society's growth over the past 100 years. 
Are you a member of the American Horticultural Society or know of someone who would like to be? Visit www.ahsgardening.org and join today. Your support will go directly to furthering our mission to share with all Americans the critical role of plants, gardens, and green spaces in creating healthy, livable communities and a sustainable planet. See you next time on Horticultural Heroes. Thanks for watching.